The US has redesignated Ansar Allah, known as the Houthis, as a terrorist outfit. What does it mean for the region? The House of Commons in the United Kingdom has passed a bill that will allow for sending asylum seekers to Rwanda. How did MPs vote on this legislation? This is the Daily Debrief. These are your stories for the day. And before we go any further, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. The Joe Biden administration has once again designated Yemen's Ansar Allah, which are known as the Houthis, as a terrorist organization. Now, this follows clashes between Yemeni forces and the US and its allies in the Red Sea. Ansar Allah had declared that ships bound to and from Israel would be targets as part of its solidarity operation with the Palestinian people and against Israeli genocide. Now, this was followed by the Houthi US bringing together a coalition against the Houthis and conducting attacks inside Yemeni territory. To understand the implications of this development, we go to Abdul. Abdul, thank you so much for joining us. So, uh, in some senses, maybe bound to happen considering that the Houthis were the target of the US, uh, the Saudi-led coalition in which the US was also involved in the US de-designating the Houthis as a terrorist organization in only 2021. But maybe quickly take us through what laid the ground for this process. Well, ever since uh, the Israeli war in Gaza, the Houthis have been uh, quite vocal about the the war, uh, its genocidal nature, also about the U.S. role in it. And they have been demanding that there should be uh, uh, an attempt to implement some ceasefire. If there is no ceasefire, the, they have the uh, responsibility of kind of in, uh, fighting on behalf of or in solidarity uh, with Palestinians. And whatever they could do, basically they have been doing since October 17, uh, they have been carrying out uh, uh, attacks on Israel-bound ships, uh, which basically have led to a massive uh, economic impact inside Israel. The, uh, apparently, the Israeli ports are, at least the ports in the Red Sea, are inoperational uh, for a very long time. And, and a large number of cargo had to move through the longer route, which goes through the uh, Cape of the Good Hope. Most, most it's more expensive, of course, more time consuming, and so on and so forth. So, uh, given the fact that the Houthi action in solidarity with the Palestinians uh, was harming Israel, and of course, Israel harming Israel would mean that it is also an impact on the U.S. interest uh, as at large. Basically, U.S. Uh, administ Joe Biden administration have been not only threatening. Uh, in fact, last since last week, it has been attacking. Uh, Houthi, uh, basically Yemen, northern Yemen, uh, different locations. At least there are reports of four times uh, uh, the northern Yemen uh, has been attacked uh, by the U.S. and U.K. forces combined. Uh, and uh, uh, so you can say that the attacks which were carried, which have been carried out by the U.S. and U.K. against the Houthis, or the threat which was uh, created due to the creation of a multinational maritime alliance uh, in the name of uh, Operation Prosperity uh, Guardian, uh, which has failed to deter the Houthi attacks. The Israeli, uh, sorry, the U.S. administration thinks that designating Houthis may have some kind of uh, uh, impact on their decisions to uh, decision to stand in solidarity with Palestinians. But as per the statements made by the Houthis, of course, they are not going to uh, stop their uh, attacks on the ships which are going through a Red Sea uh, to Israel, uh, no matter what uh, the consequences are, including their redesignation as a terrorist organization by the US. Right, Abdul, in this context, I think important to talk about the peace process or the a lack of war, maybe a lack of fighting in Yemen. We've addressed it in an earlier episode as well. Now, the key question is that once this designation uh, comes about, will this lead to a drastic change in what is happening in Yemen right now? Because uh, we know that there has been some respite for the people over the past year or so. Well, uh, the U.S. strikes inside Yemen, uh, of course, has yeah. you can say have created a situation uh, or a danger of uh, kind of uh, uh, reenactment of what was happening to Yemen for last eight years during the Saudi Arabia-led coalition's war uh, in the region, which led to a massive humanitarian crisis, 
complete destruction of the civilian infrastructure, uh, complete, uh, uh, you can say, collapse of the government in many parts of uh, the, the country. And um, of course, large, uh, uh, large, uh, uh, star large extent of starvation and human suffering. Um, so that is one. Of course, there is a possibility of that. There is another angle uh, because of the redesignation of Houthis as a terrorist organization. Uh, uh, it, of course, lead to further complications in the implementation of the humanitarian program, which is ongoing in Yemen. Though the scale has been limited for last few months, again, there are... A there are spe speculations that those scaling down of humanitarian operations in Yemen was also related to what Houthis have been doing uh, in solidarity with the Palestinians. Um, but uh, nevertheless, there is an, a humanitarian uh, program ongoing in Yemen. And if uh, the, uh, the read, sorry, not if the read, uh, designation of Houthis as a terrorist organization will lead to further complications in the inflow of uh, foreign uh, humanitarian aid in the country. That, of course, will have an impact of the a larger impact on the Yemeni population. Uh, then uh, this also leads to a, a possibility of uh, a kind of uh, strengthening of Houthi stance in the, in the, uh, in the uh, both in terms of the negotiations with ongoing negotiations with Saudi Arabia and the Saudi backed forces in uh, Southern Yemen south and eastern Yemen, but also vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the international organizations and so on and so forth. So this may uh, create complications for the peace process as well. As if now there are, of course, no indications on those lines, but this is too early to say. This was this is not more than uh, 24 hours since this decision was taken. There are already speculations that this may lead to um, uh, complications. But I think we'll have to wait and see how uh, exactly done for But uh, there is no denial that it will have an impact on the humanitarian uh, aid uh, or humanitarian program in Yemen, and that will lead to the suffering of millions of Yemenis. Um, uh, and if uh, US uh, uh, uses the excuse of Houthis being a terrorist organization, and now that they, ha they have designated it uh, for kind of escalating their attacks inside Yemen, that may also lead to, as I said before, a kind of reenactment of what was the condition um, uh, before last year uh, uh, or, or during the eight years of war against Saudi Arabia. Thank you so much for that analysis. The House of Commons passed the Safety of Rwanda Asylum and Immigration Bill, which lays the ground for sending migrants to the African country. Now, the past few days saw a right-wing revolt among certain conservatives who wanted a more stringent version of the law. And there were even doubts for a while as to whether the government's bill would finally pass in Parliament. But it did end up passing by a margin of 320 to 276 votes. Human rights organisations have harshly criticised the bill and the government's policies on migration. We go to Anish for more details. Anish, in the past we talked about this very brutal, almost inhuman scheme. And of course, there have been a lot of protests against it, which actually f uh, forced its, uh, you know, the plan could not go through because of that. But maybe could you very briefly tell us what really the plan is about and what happened over the past couple of days when Rishi Sunak seemed to face a revolt from his own party? So, uh, like, let's begin with the revolt, which wasn't that huge. Uh, if you actually look at uh, how things turned out in the parliament, uh, but uh, with only about 11 people uh, from the Conservative Party actually voting against the bill. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, Sunak uh, was not, is, did not get the majority in the parliament. If you actually look at it, he got only 320. Uh, so the, uh, the rebellion did work in showing that Sunak does not have or hold the majority in the House when it comes to this specific plan. It's just that at the time of the people who were present and voting, he just got the majority there. Uh, on the other hand, the plan specifically talks about, uh, like, uh, deals with the whole human rights clause when it comes to deportation. And uh, the fact that they want to actually overturn it, bypass that, uh, which is which was uh, something that was, uh, you know, quite fundamental to, uh, you know, l uh, rules and laws that dealt with not just deportation, but also asylum seeking and for refugees uh, is being overturned, essentially speaking, uh, just so that they can send people to Rwanda. And this is something of a desperate move by the conservative Sunak government, uh, primarily because 
obviously we have talked about how he has been failing when it comes to popularity uh, there has been desperation over the past uh, few bipoles the conservatives have lost seats that they held for decades even and uh, all of that has actually come together to actually create the situation where they're doubling down on their right wing uh, situation so to overturn not just a court order but also uh, to overturn uh, you know legal rights that are afforded to well people not just british citizens but also people uh, refugee seekers uh, is something that uh, pretty much pushes uh, this conservative the most right wing uh, that it has ever been in recent memory and this will definitely be a bigger issue obviously in the coming days when the uh, when the whole uh, election campaigns are going to be in full swing in the coming months so that is going to be a major part of the issue the question obviously is whether or not the opposition is uh, strong enough to take on this uh, in uh, and take a very principled stand on the matter ranish that is my next question in the sense that what lies ahead for this bill i believe it has to go through some more uh, procedural formalities and there'll be other challenges as well yes so if the uh, once the bill is passed obviously it has to go through the house of lords uh, so where there might there they can expect some level of greater opposition uh, because the lords are not really uh, beholden to party politics uh, most of them are not partisans they're just appointees uh, in many ways for various reasons uh, we are not getting into that but definitely there is going to be a significant opposition and there and we need, we do not exactly know how things are going to be divided in terms of votes uh, right now but uh, we can see more scrutiny on the vote bill but uh, this whole thing uh, is not going to be easy obviously to get uh, it to be enacted into uh, into a law this is going to be a long run uh, it is going to take months even and there will obviously be uh, court challenges once the bill becomes an act so these are obvious formalities and opposition but the question is whether or not the opposition the labor party is going to take a more principled stand uh, it has been like it has opposed the bill that's be very clear about that it has opposed this, this specific uh, plan to deport people to rwanda thinking of it as some safe country uh, but its question on uh, deportations or sending the boats back are are still quite ambiguous especially under kai strama and that is where the concern lies where uh, you know the current labor leadership is not taking a clear stand on what they think about asylum seekers and refugees who are going through a perilous journey across the mediterranean to reach the country uh, and in many of these cases most of them you know it's a very mortal journey actually and it, all of that is not being considered Uh, there is obviously the left wing within the labor party that is calling for a uh, clear recognition of rights of these refugees but the current leadership is shying away from taking a clear stand uh, and that is the biggest concern right now because obviously there will be challenges to the bill there will be opposition there will be scrutiny but there is a larger question of uh, refugees who come through irregular channels uh, people who are may, many of them who are victims of trafficking who needs security who needs protection and you know who needs to be taken care of within the uk and the, that question is still being unaddressed by people who we think should be addressing it in the first place well anish thank you so much for that update and that's all we have today we'll be back with a fresh episode tomorrow in the meanwhile do visit our website peoplesdispatch.org follow us on all the social media platforms and if you're watching this on youtube please hit the subscribe button <music>